Well, NDPB, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us today. Um, you are actually closer to the end of your term than you are to the beginning now, um, if you think about it, considering you've been in the job for almost four years. Mm -hmm. When you came in, you described it like a, like a house on fire. How would you describe it now? We've certainly doused the fire. And um, we actually, the house is being rebuilt and how far up we've gone, we've certainly put the foundations down, really strong foundations, and that was a really important part of, of rebuilding. And you'll, you'll notice from our annual report, the latest one, it says reaching solid ground, yes. you know, so extremely shaky start. And we, you can't build on a shaky, you know, a, a solid house on a shaky foundation. So, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased to say we're not where we, we, would, we want to be, um, but we're really far from where we started. Mm. And um, I'm really pleased with the, the, the progress we've made in terms of trying to rebuild this house. Give me a sense of what the first few years were like. How would you make the public understand just how bad things were? We know the NPA was a key site of state capture, but how bad was it? The, the key challenges when I took office were firstly, a completely uh, lack of top leadership, you know, ethical leadership. Um, and so internally, there were huge challenges because the office was very factionalized and uh, because of what had happened. Mm -hmm. um, the, there was no budget, very little budget. Uh, I should say no budget for the important work that needed to happen. Um, and so staff morale was at an all-time low for various reasons, uh, including what had happened in the NPA, lack of, of the confidence of the staff in the leadership, um, no lack of credibility of an institution. Um, and so, you know, they were, you know, the morale was extremely low. There were, had not been um, recruitment for had I think for about four or five years before I started you know so you when you're trying to build an institution with very low morale with hardly any resources that you need uh, insufficient resources um, and 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 a weak leadership you know I mean putting a national director without the other key positions yeah. below that it's very difficult to change much so, you know, when you really think about it, it's about two years since the NPA really was able to start, you know, working collaboratively at the senior leadership levels in order to properly guide guide the, the uh, organization. So, some of the state's own entities that were hit hard by state capture, um, you'll hear unread rates to say that there is still sabotage, that there is still the remnants of state capture. Do you feel that the NPA is still factionalized in any way? Do you feel that there are still remnants of state capture? Or do you feel that it is now a unified organization? I don't think it's factionalized anymore. Um, I think it's a, there's a, there's a, the, even during state capture, one of the strengths of the NPA is your rank and file prosecutors just wanted to serve the victims and survivors of crime and to bring justice. And it was really at the senior leadership levels where they seem to have lost the plot. So when I took office, you know, you still had a groundswell of prosecutors in the NPA who wanted to take the NPA back to being that organization that they were proud of. It was not very difficult to actually bring the good people in the NPA mm. because they're the majority. And so we certainly not factionalized anymore. But there are certainly, um, you know, we are dealing uh, with certain staff members that have been compromised. Um, it has taken longer than we would have hoped, but these processes do take time. Was appointing Advocate Crenier a mistake? I don't think it was a mistake. Um, uh, you know, I've always said that I had no doubt about Advocate Crenier's commitment to, to making a difference. Um, so, you know, but I think there's, this is a tricky question, you know, I think it's, it's, um, you know, you, you, l let me say this, that, you know, in, in trying to build an institution like the ID, you know, uh, one needed um, someone that had extremely good leadership skills, 
um, someone that could collaborate very, very well with stakeholders because, you know, the, the regret is sadly, I mean, the legal framework of the ID is such that it is premised on um, being resourced from other government institutions um, as well as from the private sector as necessary. But that means you've got to be able to collaborate very closely with stakeholders. So it was a very complicated and complex environment. Um, and it needed to be very carefully, you know, you needed to, it, you know, to, to move through this with, a, with, with very um, certain types of skills that actually enabled one to collaborate for success. The NPA has to prosecute without fear or favour. Um, but of course, you always have to look at the political climate. We know from 2007, 2008, what happened with, with former President Jacob Zuma. Uh, you find yourself strangely, potentially in a similar position now with Ramaphosa around Pala Pala. Um, obviously, from, from your side, I imagine politics has nothing to do with the decision to prosecute. Politics has nothing to do with the decision to prosecute. I want to make that very clear. Uh, but the reality is we, we don't work in a, a bubble. You know, we work in a highly politicized environment. So we need to hold the line on the rule of law and to ensure that our decisions are taken no matter who's at the end of the evidence. And so... We also need to understand that the implications of our decision making, it has consequences. And so in as much as politics will not dictate uh, our decision making, we need to manage decisions in a responsible way. And so we will always do that to ensure that the best interests of justice are served. Our reputation, not just as the NPA, but as individual professionals, depends on our ability to ensure that we defend the rule of law at all costs and that we seem to be doing that. And as the national director, I'm not com prepared to compromise, compromise that for anyone. You have uh, three years left of, of yeah. your term, is that right? Yeah. Um, can you give us an assurance you'll, you'll be here to the end and, and what do you hope to achieve by the end? Absolutely. I mean, barring some vis mayor that may happen, you know, we, we can't help that. But, but I have every intention of, of serving my term out. I mean, what better job is there in the, in the world today? And I mean that sincerely. I, this is the most purposeful thing I have ever done in my life. And I will not give it up for anything. Um, you know, and so I'm really, you know, the next three years, we're hoping that, you know, we, we have a very ambitious five-year strategy, which ends in two years. And I'm certainly hoping that we will have achieved a number of our strategic objectives. But um, no, I mean, really, I I'm really hope to see that, you know, at the end of these three years, we can, we can sit back and say that we, we've really turned this country around together with the NPA can't do it alone, but that we have done our absolute best to contribute to the rebuilding of the country. So no, I have absolutely no intention of going anyway. Um, I love what I'm doing, and so why would I leave? This is my purpose in life. <laughs>